Welcome to The Other Side of 40. My name is April Grant, and I'm here to help women make positive changes with their lives after the age of 40. Let The Other Side of 40 become your community to find inspiration and support to start the next chapter of your life. Hello, this is April, and welcome to another episode of The Other Side of 40. Today, I'm excited to have on Bree Johnson. She is a big sister, digital marketing strategist, web designer, and owner of TBJ Digital Consulting and TBJ TBJ Brands, and a serial connector of women. And we, that's what we do here. We really want to connect with women and make sure that we are all, um, we are stronger together. Uh, she exists to motivate women to improve their mindset, money, and mental health so they can master their lives. She started several small businesses and has seen herself becoming the CEO of a successful conglomerate. Playing business was her favorite game and she always loved new school supplies. So here she is, uh, Brie. Now, typically, you know, I ask about the awakening moment and um, Brie's a little younger, so she had hers a little earlier. So can you tell us about it? Um, yeah, so actually back in May, um, after my 27th birthday, I realized that I was unhappy and suffocating. Um, I work full-time. I worked full-time as a digital director for um, a national nonprofit, and I had moved to Atlanta to be the digital director for um, the 2018 coordinated campaign to elect Stacey Abrams. Um, so I, most of my, like, day or week, um, I spent working. I worked, like, 60, 70 hours a week. Um, and I still have my business. Um, and when I moved to Atlanta, I moved here without any of my family or any of my friends. And I hated my job, but I was too like, I don't know. I was too scared to say that I hated my job because I felt like I had such this privilege at, you know, a younger age to be in my role that I should have been grateful for it. And I was grateful, but I was also unhappy. Um, and as someone who formerly struggled with depression and anxiety, I knew that I needed to take control of my life and my circumstances um, before it went sideways. So I remember, I just remember after my birthday, I woke up and I was like crying and I couldn't stop crying. I didn't know I was crying. I just felt like someone was like standing on my chest and like in my life. And I didn't know like why. And I thought about all the things I was unhappy about. And my first step was to go and buy a dog. Okay. So <laughs> I had this, I had this roommate who I hated. Um, and so I would never stay at my apartment because I hated this roommate. Um, so I felt like I was in limbo because I didn't have anywhere. I had somewhere to stay. Like I was paying rent for this apartment that I wouldn't stay in. Um, and so I had asked her if I could buy a dog, you know, out of like courtesy and she told me no. And I went and bought the dog anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so that was like this thing. And I was like, I actually just don't even want to be here. So I paid to cancel our lease. Um, like four months early and I moved out of the apartment back into my own space and like that was the beginning and then once I got into my own space I was like okay so it's not just the apartment it's also the job and I can't keep doing this right um, so in the middle of a global pandemic I quit my job <laughs> okay oh so we're talking about right now <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes um, I woke up on a Monday morning and <laughs> was like, I am quitting and sent in my resignation letter. Um, and I was out of a job a week later and it was the best decision I ever made. The dog, wow. the apartment, the job, it was all the best decision I could have ever made for myself. Well, so tell us, I'm assuming you started TBJ Enterprises and your brand after that. So what made you go into this uh, line of work? It sounds like you worked in digital before, but tell us a little bit more about the transition from employee to uh, business owner. Yeah, so I've had my business for six years. 
Um, and I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I thought that I was going to work my way up in corporate America and be like the chief marketing officer for Target. Um, I thought I was going to stay in corporate America and, you know, just do that. And as the years went on, like my business just started taking more of a priority and I enjoyed it more. And um, when it came time to quit my job, I was making more in my business than I was as a digital director. Um, and so it, the, the conversation I had with myself was, do I really not want to do this because I'm scared of like health insurance <laughs> or do I want to go ahead and like take control of my life and like stop making excuses to like evade my unhappiness? Um, and I had my business for six years. So it was proven that I could do it. And it was proven um, that I had a client base and that I knew what I was doing. Um, I was just scared. And so I stopped being scared. So what did, what did you do to stop being scared? I mean, is there a process you took or did you just kind of jump off a, a cliff or, uh, I mean, you quit your job. So I guess technically that is jumping off the cliff, but what mm -hmm. did anything else give you like the confidence to lean into your business versus saying, you know, seeking that comfort of your position? Yeah. So, um, pretty much everyone, I I'm fortunate enough to have a very supportive village of people. Um, and so they were all, you know, witnessing my spiral of unhappiness and they were encouraging me to figure it out. And maybe for like the three months before I quit my job, I started this morning routine where I would wake up and I would burn like Palo Santo and I would say my affirmations and I would write in my journal and I would read the Bible um, and I would work out and I would meditate. I would do these things like every morning because I was trying to, when I started it, I was trying to like brace myself for the day. Like I was trying to fill myself with so many good things that I could make it through the day. Oh, um, wow. Okay. And what it, what it turned into is I was filling myself with like the confidence to not just make it through the day, but to take control of my day and to honor myself and my feelings and to be true to how I was feeling. And I think that from that stemmed my like, I'm not going to keep doing this. So it's okay. Like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm going to go and do something else. Um, and I think that that started with me really clearing out uh, 90 minutes in the morning to focus on how I was feeling and figure that out, right? Right. So um, what, what was super uncomfortable about changing the position? So I know we were, your kind of part of the form, you said um, that getting out of your comfort zone. So what part of it was really getting out of your comfort zone? I mean, for me, getting up 90 minutes early um, and with the kids in the house means 90 minutes earlier than them getting up. That's mm -hmm. completely out of my comfort zone right now. <laughs> so um, what else did you do to get out of your comfort zone? Yeah. So for me, getting up 90 minutes earlier as a person who was not a morning person at all um, was definitely out of my comfort zone. But I think also the, the major thing that was out of my comfort zone was my reluctance to not quit because I wanted a paycheck. Like I was, I was very comfortable with receiving a paycheck and showing up unhappy and halfway to a job. Like I was, because I knew like my bills would be paid and you know, I could, I could work on my business as a hobby. I didn't have to um, push myself to figure that out because it wasn't my only source of income. And I really thought that like corporate America was like this cushiony pillow of security, right? Well, like I would have they, to. That's what they sell you on. <laughs> exactly. And and I and I I bought into it, which is crazy because my dad is an entrepreneur. Like I grew up, and the people who were around me and who raised me, they were all entrepreneurs. Um, and so then here I go, and I try and chart my own path in corporate America, and I hate it and it's suffocating. Um, but for me, it 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 felt like this safe place where I knew I would get a check and I could pay my rent. Um, and stepping out of that was challenging. I mean, that is something that I know a lot of us have dealt with is making the choice of that steady paycheck every week or two weeks versus, 
you're going to do the same hustle, but especially in the beginning, that paycheck may not be consistent until you get into a good rhythm. So, you know, trying to understand that kind of uh, dynamic in becoming a full-time entrepreneur. So what have you learned so far? And you're, I mean, you just started. So what are the, even in the few months, have you learned really about growing your business or making it more consistent or whatever there would, would be? Yeah. So basically I learned that I can do anything I put my mind to. Like there really isn't a ceiling for me unless I create one. So if I want to make sure that my rent is paid, then how many clients do I need to make sure that my rent is paid? You know, I've learned that I can do hard things, you know, like I can advocate for myself. I can show up when I don't feel like it or when I'm tired. Um, and I've, I've also learned that I'm exceptional at what I do when I'm not being forced to do it under like the conditions of corporate America, you know, like it's easy to, it's easy to talk to my audience because I know who they are and I can talk to them without it being whitewashed or watered down or, you know, anything like that, because I'm literally just doing what I'm good at and the gift that God gave me. Um, and I, and I think that sometimes we have these gifts and we take them to corporate America and then we feel like maybe we aren't that good at it or we're not exceptional at it because we're trying to do it within the confines of someone who doesn't really understand our gift. But when we have complete control and autonomy over how we cultivate our gift and use our gift, then you realize that it's not really up to anyone else to tell you how you use it. You got to figure that out because the only person who can figure it out is you. And because I didn't have any choice but to figure it out, right? Like I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing my business, I'm seeing even just like my happiness shine in a way that like I didn't even know it could. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about your actual business. Mm -hmm. So um, I own a number of businesses, but the one that like I do full time is called TBJ Digital Consulting. And really what we do is we help women entrepreneurs create profitable marketing campaigns so they can get more sales and clients online. So a lot of times, right, like we're downloading freebies and we're doing Google searches and we're trying to piece together all of these strategies to market ourselves in front of our ideal audience. But, and, and we do it under the premise that like marketing is this one size fits all thing. And if I just do this step, this way that this person told me, I'll get the same results as them. And that's not true. Um, marketing is more of an experiment. It's more of like a test, a retest. So what I do is I help my audience learn how to test and retest with their audience. I teach them how to create goals and achieve those goals and how to build out signature services that their audience actually wants and that they're excited and ready to purchase. Um, and not through a one size fits all strategy, but through more of like an experiment and listening and testing and retesting and really figuring out what your gift is and how it aligns with what your audience wants. Um, Cause I feel like that's my zone of genius. So that's what I do um, most of the time. But I also have a podcast on my dad called Candid Conversations with My Dad. Um, wow. I have a, thank you. <laughs> I have a virtual book club with my business bestie called the Business Bestie Book Club. It's for high achieving women. Um, and we meet twice a month and we talk about books that are like personal development, spiritual development, financial development, all of the things. Next month, we're going to be reading Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Okay. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, and then I have the Brie Johnson, which is like where I blog and it's kind of like where I house um, like my speaking and things like that. Um, so those are my businesses. Wow. That's a lot. You got a lot going on already at 27. Um, yeah. That is uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to ask? So for your digital marketing company, can mm -hmm. you give the audience like three tips that mm -hmm. they should have in their mind when they're preparing a digital marketing campaign? Of course. So the first one is you really want to identify what your goal is. And a goal is not, I want to launch this program and get 20 new clients. Um, 
you want to get like really into the weeds about the goal. So if you have a new service called the organize your life course or something, I don't know, then your, your goal would be something like, I would like to enroll um, six women over the next 14 days into my organize your life course by implementing these three strategies on these platforms. Um, and then you want to block off time in your calendar to implement those strategies. And you want to measure the success of those strategies. As an example, if one of your strategies is to post every day on Instagram and you go into your Instagram insights and you realize that you really only get the most engagement on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then you can save yourself five hours of time the other five days a week when you're posting by not posting on those days and using that time to do something else that will increase your revenue or get in front of your audience maybe that's pitching yourself to be to be on podcasts or tv shows or anything where your target audience lives um, or writing blogs or newsletters where your audience can consume content related to the, to the program that you're pitching so that's one tip. Um, another tip is to look for complementary audiences. So who do you follow on Instagram who sells a, a service or a course or a program where you can be a complement to what they are doing because then you can penetrate their audience in a way that isn't competitory. Um, so that's another tip. Um, and then the third tip is to really like test your messaging. So get your audience involved in the messaging that you use on your website so you, and you can do that through like polls or questions on instagram think about like what you want your brand tagline to be and maybe you do a poll with your audience and say like do you like this one or this one um right maybe when it's time to launch programs and you're thinking about like the pain points that you want to solve or the desires that you want to help them achieve maybe you ask your audience what it is that they're struggling with and you use the language that they give you to position your course or your program because then it'll resonate with them emotionally. Oh, wow. Okay. Those are really, I mean, useful and specific tips, which are good <laughs> because you can use them because what ends up happening is a lot of times you get these tips and you're like, that's nice, but I don't know what to do with any of that. Um, exactly. Look at the insights. Okay. What am I looking for? You know, um, so that's good. I didn't even think about going into the insights. I really need to for my my Instagram page <laughs> and all my pages all and really the, figure all, it out. All of the good stuff lives in the data. So even if you don't go into the insights, right, when you're posting things, so let's say you post four times a week and you realize that two of the posts really skyrocket. Maybe one of them gets 150 likes and 40 comments and another one gets 300 likes and 20 comments. But then you realize that the other two posts got like nine likes. Well, what was the difference, right? Right. What was the type of content? What did you say in the caption? Did you ask for a call to action? Did you ask them to tag a friend? Like, what did you do differently that made this content take off and the other two didn't? And then how do you duplicate that? How do you keep doing that over and over and over again? Which is what marketing is, right? It's like, it's figuring yeah. out what works and then refining it. So that way you're just doing it over and over and over again. And it's yeah. something that I teach um, in my programs because I feel like we don't really teach. Like we're, we're, we're getting all of these freebies and these uh, workshops and all this stuff, but we aren't teaching like how to actually market. Right. Yeah. I mean, marketing is a term that a lot of people don't understand. And especially when you think about uh, even the term marketing, because it's so broad and people don't, don't understand it. They don't realize that it means part of it is being front of mind. So that means always being there, always being around, always, you know, shouting out your message and, and in, in positive ways, like not always marketing a product, not always trying to sell something to them, but giving them information and including value. Um, because that's what people want. They want to feel like they're getting value from you before they want to spend money with you. Exactly. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have any social media handles that we can use? Yes. Yeah, so if you are looking to follow me, you can connect with me pretty much on every platform at the Bree Johnson. So that's the, and then B-R-E-E -E Johnson. Um, you can connect with me there. Awesome. 
All right. Um, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Other Side of 40. You can find us at our site, theothersideof40.com and on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Other Side 40.